Live from the Mecca of Mormonism, Salt Lake City, Utah, this is Heart of the Matter, where we are learning together how to walk in the age of fulfillment. I'm your host, Sean McCraney. Tonight's program has the potential to sting some people, so I want to be very cautious on how I proceed uh, So I'm gonna, and balance my remarks with some care and understanding. Unlike our Calvinist brothers and sisters who maintain a strange man-made doctrine relative to God and his consummate sovereignty over all people to force them to do everything that they do. He is the puppeteer. I maintain that there is an existing relationship between God and humankind that is like a two-lane highway. God is acting. We are responding. All this back and forth, back and forth. And where it's one where God is reaching and extending down to all people and it's the other where we are choosing to reply or respond to what he is doing in faith and dedication and love. I'd also suggest that God works with us relative to the things that are in this world, relative to circumstances that are surrounding us, and that he is not always the sole driving force behind the things that occur here, but he is, in fact, amidst those things, and he's there to respond. Uh, to to help through those things. We have the tendency to sort of slip to one side or another when it comes to our lives and God, and we either give him all the credit for everything relative to some situation, or we exempt him from the, from the uh, situation altogether. So what I mean by that is, well, I emphasize the fact that the idea that God... Uh, is engaged with us. He's engaged with us to some extent or another. I don't know what the extent is. And it it determines uh, some factors, but not all of them. And how much he's engaged with us requires some thought. For instance, in the event that someone is murdered... The, I'm sure maybe some of you have known people or have loved ones who have been murdered. Christians have a tendency to say, that man murdered my friend, my son. This person murdered my loved one. And the law confirms that, that idea when the murderer is convicted and sent to prison. Okay. But the reality is, and this is what's kind of hard and that stings, if you believe that God is the giver and taker of life, he had a hand in the loss of that life that was taken. I mean, if someone points a gun at me and shoots and fires and the bullet misses or hits me and doesn't kill me, then we say, God spared my life. God saved me, right? Because the bullet didn't kill me. But if the bullet struck true and killed me, we say, that man murdered me. And it's an interesting thing, isn't it, that we don't include the idea that when someone is shot, that God is the one who took their life. If God is the one who determines if someone lives or not, it's not necessarily entirely in the hands of the person who pointed the trigger, pointed the gun and pulled. And I think it's a very important caveat to our thinking because I believe that there is a healing, healthy factor involved when we include God in all events and not just some. I just don't think we can heal as sufficiently or as quickly if we just, if we just lay the, the fact of a, a detrimental result on a person and not remember that God is the one who gives and takes life. And, uh, and so certainly on the two-lane highway between God and man, the person who pulls the trigger is guilty and ought to be punished. But in an effort to bring peace and healing and tranquility 
to the life of the survivors, it seems to me that it's important to say God chose not to spare their life. For the, the same is true with everything, if you think about it. We are profoundly prone as believers to praising God when someone is miraculously saved in a traffic accident or from the ravages of cancer or from dangerous situations or surviving wars and, and all the things we are prone when it's a positive to give benefit to God and to give a credit to God. But I think it's just as important to include him in the mix when a child can't be resuscitated who falls into a pool or a loved one does pass from cancer or from anything that causes us pain in this world. I just think it's, it's important that believers include him in the mix because when you include him in the mix, it takes some of the hatred, anger, onus off external factors and it places it in his hands that he has a purpose behind allowing some people to pass and some people to be saved. I'm suggesting that we squarely place him in all things that occur around us uh, as a means to help us cope with the tragedies. Because God is good, and this is tough, but because God is good, then whatever he decides in a given situation is out of his love. It's out of his foresight. It's out of his goodness and light. And if that includes a babe dying from crib death or a teen in a car wreck or a loved one from cancer, he remains good has his hand in the fact and there's a purpose behind it as tough as that is for us to know. Remember, it's a two-way street when it comes to God. Traveling down from heaven is him and his ways. Traveling up from earth is our response to what he has to say. Our God is always there to help pick up the pieces and help heal us in these times of tremendous pain and suffering. But when we include him and he's there and he's part of it, I think it helps us in the overall process. I think it's really healthy, necessary, and biblical to admit now and in the hours of tragedy that God does have his hands on those who are shot by another person but die or who are shot by another person and live. Solomon reminds, reminds us three times in Ecclesiastes that it's God who gives each of us our days under the sun, saying in, uh, in, in uh, not saying, I'm not going to quote him, in Acts chapter 17, verse 15, he tells us that God giveth to all life and breath and all things. Certainly, men and women, we can cause disease and decay and certainly factors of the fallen world can contribute to the loss of life and, 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 and disease and things like that. Job in Job 121 says, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In my estimation, and while we all play or play limited roles in causing pain and even death on this earth, to admit and include the loving, good, living God's hand in these things will help contribute to our healing, our understanding, and our knowing Him better in spite of the pain whether the results are good or painful. Write your comments below and we'll get to them here on Heart of the Matter tomorrow night.